Okay, so now I have taken a piece of white glass and I'm going to do a little cup that I can do what's called a dirty pour. Um, what I've done is take my enamels, the dry enamels, and mix them half and half with the layering mix. Then I've added about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of water. Um, you may find that one versus the other works better for you. And I'm going to put a generous amount of white in the cup. And then you can add your other colors on top, on the sides, and it makes different patterns. This one is mint and julep, 355. That one is aqua splash, 3003. That one is 43 sapphire. And we're going to add some purple, which is 37. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put my cup on here, flip this over, let it run down the sides, and then pull it off. I'll let some of that run out. So we don't waste. Okay. And then start moving it around. I can add more color back on top of this if I want. This just kind of blends all those colors together. So it kind of depends on if you want a definite pattern or if you want it more subtle. I'm trying to pop those bubbles there. Sometimes you need to just kind of touch it to tell it where you want it to go. And I just try to, I'm just tapping it so that I can make it go in those areas where it did not. So that I don't lose a bunch off the edge. And if you don't get enough on there, you can always... Like I said, add more color. And then here where I have some of those holes, I'm just going to tap so that it starts moving in that direction. Give it a little helping hand. I've got quite a bit on the edge there, so I'm going to back off and let it go that way and then come back. And I just raised, I had two jars that I'd done some mixes in and just raised it off of my table. Um, it's easier to control, I think, when it's up in the air. Kind of see what's going on. So you can kind of see those colors. It's very soft, blended. It's almost like you've done a two color blend with a, a brush. There again, just giving it a little helping hand there. You will need to clean off your edges unless you want the color on your edge and you'll need to make sure that there's no product on the back. When this dries, because of the layering mix, uh, in 24 hours, it's hard as a brick. Can you get it off if you don't clean it off right away? Yes, you'll have to scrape it off with a, a metal tool, like your tool that you mix with. Okay, so now we're going to try to get it to cover the rest of the area. We will use a torch to create some cells. And if you don't have the same amount of water in your um, colors, all the colors, then one's going to be thinner than the other and it tends to, to move more. So that may be 
something that you want to do. So you can control the thickness, how thick or thin they are. Uh, if you wanted it to be organic and not cover the entire surface, you could do that also. For this particular piece, I want it solid. Now, I'm going to kind of just remove anything I feel on the back side there. And then, you know, you can just kind of tap it. That'll bring the bubbles to the surface. Just make sure you've got it all covered before you're ready to uh, start your torch. I've got a little bit of color left here in the container, so I'm going to add that and kind of move it. Okay, so done with that. You need to torch while it is wet. Okay, so each one of these cups are probably not quite two ounces, probably an ounce and a half. And you can see I've got still about a third of a container. So probably a teaspoon of each color. Well, now we're going to take a torch. This is just something you can buy off of Amazon. And then you need the butane fuel to, um, and you load it through the bottom. There's a little area right there that you just, you would go outside in a vented area and shake up your uh, fuel and push it in there and then you'll be able to tell when it's full. Okay, so I've already done that. There's a little switch on the back here on this particular one. Pull down, push, sometimes it takes a couple. Okay, now we have our flame and I like to use a circular motion because you want to constantly move. If you stay in one area too long, you can actually burn the surface or scorch it. Okay, so where it's heavier, you tend to get more cells. And the white, I think the white, the titanium that's in the white, uh, definitely helps with this. So you can get, it basically starts to dry the surface and it puckers up the areas or pulls them so that you get those little circular bubble looking and it brings out all the uh, brings out some of the colors that are underneath that maybe you didn't see so in this area it's bringing out some of that mint julep uh, and then we've got some of the sapphire underneath here so you're going to see some of that you need to be careful this is a flame so don't have anything around it that could catch on fire and don't get crazy with your circling circling sorry <laughs> okay so this just creates cells it dries some of the areas and I just keep going over it till I get something I like it's fun to watch these react and I'll move it closer to the camera in a little bit when I'm done okay so constantly moving starts to dry that area. The glass can actually get warm so that's one of, another reason that I elevate it up above the tabletop. I've got parchment paper underneath me so that it's easy to clean up or if I want to use some of the drips that drip on the parchment to maybe fill in an area or do my edge with. It makes it nice because it stays damp. If you had a paper towel it's going to absorb into that so that's one of my reasons. You can see I'm on white glass, so some of the areas that are thinner, I'm getting some white, which I like that. So just keep working. Like I said, just keep moving. You don't want to stay in one area too long. 
and I find that for myself moving in a circular fashion uh, definitely gives me better cells. Okay. Alright, so I'll finish this and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's dry. And then we will fire it and I will show you that also. Okay. And again, I'm using Colors for Earth enamels, dry enamels, with layering mix, which we carry. You can find all those on our website www.colorsforearth.com Alright, I think I've about got as much as it's going to work. Uh, the end of this gets very hot, so make sure that you don't lay it down on paper. Make sure you have uh, where it will stand up, or you can take it uh, and lay it on a kiln shelf, something that isn't going to matter. But I can tell you just holding this, the bottom is warm see all the different cells the little white ones are the white background glass okay all right Okay, so what I did was I had screened with 355 mint julep and you can barely see any of that showing up on this dark. I thought it was going to show up much darker. So I had accented with copper. So now what I'm going to do is just come back and silk screen with copper this time. I've used our copper sparkle mixed with our glass medium. And I also mixed a little bit of layering mix with it to make it uh, somewhat more opaque. Okay, and then you need a squeegee. And what I've done is just mix it in here. I've got it to, it's kind of like a runny, honey, honey, but slightly thin. You don't want it so thin it's going to weep underneath your screen. And because this is a large screen, uh, this is a 12 inch circle that I have. I'm going to put the color here in the middle and then I'm going to use the squeegee and go out from there. And the squeegee has two different sides. It has a slanted side and just the flat. You want to use the slanted side and I'm going to push the product from the center out. Okay, so here we go. And you want to push hard enough that you can see uh, your screen image and remember you've got product on the back of your squeegee so I'm catching the product from the middle and pulling out with it and I know it's hard for you to see some of this because I've got to hold on to it And then if it goes too far out over into my uh, back color that I put on here, I'll just wipe it off. It comes off pretty easy. Okay, save your excess. Don't want to waste it. And let's check and see what we've got. Looks pretty good. Then I'll go back and I'll fill in those uh, areas where it didn't quite touch because the glass did kind of pull in or shrink just a little bit. So I'll go back and touch that up whenever it's dry. 